Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you probably one of the best techniques you're ever going to learn regarding seam placement for UV unwrapping. Might sound too good to be true, but this solution will give you the perfect seam placement 100% of the time. This only works for hard surface models, so if you do organics and things like that, you uh, won't have the same results. This is specifically for hard surface types of shapes but it will work 100% of the time. I haven't encountered a situation where these techniques do not work. So some of you might be familiar with the unwrapping process, some of you might not be familiar, but generally what you wanna do before you unwrap is you want to place seams. And a lot of people get tripped up as to where you should actually place these seams. So there's five things I do. The first thing I do is I automate the seam placement, which we're gonna cover in here. And then there's four automation techniques that I use that allows you to clean up some of the seams we don't need and get you the perfect seam placement. If you follow this formula, I can promise you you're going to have the best seam placement possible because of course the less seams you have, the less um, textures are going to kind of like, you know, discontinue when, they're, um, when you're texturing your model. You always want to use as little seams as possible. Now this weapon here is from our upcoming game asset course uh, that will be announced at some point. Um, I really wanted to show this in a YouTube video though because these techniques are just essential. So what I'm going to do is use one of these pieces in here. Let's maybe take this one. And you're going to see my seams are all set up very nicely here. And I want to show you exactly what techniques you should be using for your seams. So let me go ahead and clear this one out. What we want to do, I'll just clear out the seams here. What we want to do when we're placing seams on hard surface objects is we want to automate the process as much as possible. I see way too many videos showing like how to place seams from scratch. It just wastes time. What you should be doing is letting Blender do the work for you and then fixing things that Blender didn't really place properly, okay? So what we want to do is go up here to select and then select sharp edges. What this will do is select all the quote unquote sharp edges based on this 30 degree threshold. What this means is that any angle above 30 degrees, well, or any edge angle, like for example, right here, this would be like, you know, almost 90 degrees, a little bit less than that, but you know what I mean. Every single angle above this 30 degree threshold right here is going to be marked. I always keep it at 30. This is a good value to work with. You could tweak it, um, but generally 30 is just going to be a good one to start off with. So once you've done that, what you want to do is press Control E and then mark your seams, okay? Now there are four specific situations you're going to run into. I haven't found any other situations. These four cover pretty much every possible situation that could occur. We cover some of these in our unwrapping guide. It's free on our website if you want to pick that up. I'll link it in the description, but these four techniques are going to give you the perfect seam placement. So the first thing are chamfer seams. Now what exactly are chamfer seams? Well, I want to kind of give you a more intuitive idea here. So I'm going to take a cube and show you. So a chamfer is simply a one segment bevel like this, so like 45 degrees, right? So if I were to make a chamfer and select the sharp edges, you're going to see the edges on this chamfer also get selected because those angles are above 30 degrees. Now if this were a bit more rounded and we did this, you're going to see these don't actually get selected because these are these angles here for each step are below 30 degrees. So pretty much chamfers are going to be the only type of bevel um, as long as you're using that 30 degree angle threshold here that gets selected. Now the issue with chamfer seams is you don't need to have a seam on both ends of the chamfer. It's redundant, there's no need to have it. So you can always remove at least one of the seams on the chamfer. So what you could do is just control E and clear the seam. And I'm gonna actually add a UV's material so you can kind of see how this looks visually. So you're gonna see, I could easily clear out one of the seams on this chamfer and it's gonna be fine. So with that being said, the first thing I like to do on my hard surface models is I like to look for chamfered edges like that or, you know, bevels that are close enough to a chamfer. Right here, obviously this isn't quite 45 degrees, but it's close enough. So what I could do here is I could go in and I could just remove one of these. It doesn't really matter which one. As you do this more, you'll kind of know which one to remove. 
intuitively, but you could just go here and then clear that seam out. And you can go around to every single chamfered piece and clear out at least one of those seams there, okay? Let's see if I have any more. I don't think I do. Okay, cool. So this brings me into my next topic, topic number two, which is continuous sets of faces. So I'm going to go back to that cube analogy real quick. Let me just add in another cube so you can see exactly what I mean. We'll give it a UVs material. Maybe I'll, I don't know, round this one out and then maybe I'll chamfer this bottom one, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and select the sharp edges and then mark a seam. Cool. All right, so let's talk about continuous sets of faces. So continuous sets of faces are basically selections like this, where they kind of continue consistently all the way through the model. Make sense? These are continuous sets of faces. Now, whenever you have situations like this, you only need one seam on that area, okay? So basically, for this entire continuous set of faces, I have one seam here, two seams it's passing through, one, two, three, four seams total. We only need this to pass through one seam. There's no need to have this many. So in these situations, what you can do is you can remove every single seam except for one. You have to have at least one, okay? And this brings us into our third topic, which has to do with what I call rings. If I were to remove every single seam in this case, we would end up getting these nasty distortions, and these are caused by rings. So let me show you what those are. So let me take a cylinder. A cylinder is going to be the best demonstration here. So I'm just going to add in a cylinder. I'll give it this UVs material. We'll do the same thing. Select the sharp edges, and then mark the seam. And you're going to see, although we got the sharp edges marked with a seam, the UVs still look awful. And this is caused by a ring. If I alt-click on this set of faces and take a look at how this looks in the UV editor, let me remove this checker texture here, you're going to see we have a ring. Sometimes they'll look a bit more like skewed and distorted, but they roughly look like a ring, right? So the analogy I give people for these cases is imagine you have a sheet of paper, a flat sheet of paper, and you tape both ends together, you'll have a ring out of that sheet of paper. And if you want to flatten it again, what you would have to do is just remove that piece of tape or, you know, cut it somewhere, right? That's how you would flatten it. The same exact idea occurs with these types of rings in UV space. We need to cut it somewhere, and the way we cut it to flatten it out is by using a seam. So whenever you have rings like this, what you want to do is just put one seam somewhere. It doesn't matter where, just put it in here somewhere. And this brings me back to my last topic with the continuous set of faces because if we were to remove this one, we would have a ring, right? So you just want to have at least one seam there to make sure it flattens out. And this is specifically why we don't need a bunch of extra seams here, because the more seams we have, the more discontinuations we have in our textures, right? So for continuous sets of faces, you only need a single seam. And whenever you have ring situations like this, all you have to do is just put one single seam down the center. Really easy to do. Now the last situation you're going to run into is what I call sneaky edge markings. These are sneaky because um, they're not very obvious until you see it. So like I said, whenever you mark your seams, we go up here to select sharp edges, and then we mark the seams this way. But sometimes what happens is this 30 degree threshold will sometimes catch edges we don't want to have caught. For example, this right here ended up getting caught. I guess this one was slightly above the 30 degrees. Same for down here. These were also caught as well. But these areas don't need to have any sort of seams. So these are what I call sneaky edge markings. All we have to do is clear these guys out. You just select them, clear seam. We'll do it in checker or material mode so you can see. And all you have to do is just go in here, look for those sneaky markings and just uh, remove them really. We have another one right here. And you're gonna see the more you do that, the cleaner it looks. Now once you start applying all four of these techniques together, you'll begin to realize that you're gonna have the perfect seam placement. There's no other way around it. As long as you follow those four specific situations and you clean them up, you're gonna have perfect seam placement. And I can just kind of pan around here and I can just keep using those concepts. You're gonna see 
right here we have that chamfer situation, but simultaneously we have a continuous set of faces going through. So with that in mind, I could go ahead and clear these out as well. I could clear this out as well because it's still continuing down through here, right? I could clear out this one. And I could also clear out this one. I can't clear out this one because once again, we have to have at least one seam on our continuous set of faces, right? If I clear this one, we're gonna get distortions. It's kind of your choice where you wanna place those seams. I choose to put them in areas where I'm not gonna see it. For example, on this little scope, I'm never gonna see that seam down there. So it's a perfect location. And then if I go in here, you're gonna see we have an issue with a ring, as you can see. So what do we do? We simply put a seam straight down the center somewhere, and then we're gonna have a much cleaner unwrap. And once you combine all four of these techniques together, you're going to have, the only thing you're gonna be left with, this is the only possible solution, is a perfect unwrap. There's gonna be no other areas that you're missing because you went through all four of those steps and got yourself the most optimal unwrapping result. And you're gonna see if I kind of pan around here, we have a pretty damn good result. So once again, let's recap. There are four different situations you need to account for. Situations where you have chamfers and you have double seams going on, right? You can usually remove at least one of those. Then you have the second situation, which is with continuous sets of faces, kind of like this, going all the way through, right? Then you have the third situation, which is with rings, kind of like we have right here. We need at least one seam to avoid that ring formation. And then the fourth situation we have is the sneaky edge markings where the sharp edges kind of catch angles and edges we don't actually want to have cut. So you want to be careful there. So if you follow through those four steps, you're going to have a perfect unwrap. This works fantastic for hard surface models. We're going to go a lot more in depth into this technique when we release our second uh, Game Asset 2.0 course. So I'm really excited to release that one. But for right now, I thought this video was absolutely essential for anyone to watch because um, a lot of people struggle with seam placement and hard surface, and this video is really all you need to get used to it. So I hope that helps you out, and I really encourage you, take a model you've made before. Take a relatively complex model, as a matter of fact. Apply those four techniques I showed you in this video, and I guarantee you, you're going to have results. You're going to have a really clean unwrap with minimal seam placement. So let me know how this worked for you. I really hope this video helped. Um, this is just kind of a technique I've refined over time, and I'm really happy to share it with you. If you want a bit more information on hard surface unwrapping, you can download our free unwrapping guide on our website. I'll link it in the top of the description. That should be pretty useful as well. Anyways, really hope the video helped. If it did, just drop me a thumbs up. Helps out with the algorithm, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.